today we're going to be looking at a passage of scripture from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 26 through 80. Throughout this passage it tells us of the announcement of, of Jesus, of a visit that Mary had with her cousin Elizabeth, and then of the birth of John the Baptist. We're going to be looking at all three of those, those stories here today in this video. First, we come to the to the announcement of Jesus to Mary. Mary was a virgin. She was espoused to be married uh, to Joseph. Espoused basically means engaged. They was engaged. When the angel of the Lord appeared unto her and told her that you're going to give birth to a son, will be conceived of the Holy Ghost. He's going to give him the name of Jesus because he's going to save their people, save his people from their sins. So when I when I think of that, the, the mention that she was espoused to be Joseph, to be married to Joseph, I pictured that she already had her life all planned out. She she had it all figured out. Thought she knew exactly what she wanted, thought she knew exactly what she needed. Just like many people in the world today, they think they know exactly what they need. They think they know exactly what they want. They think they know exactly how they want to live their lives. Many choosing to live their lives in the pleasures of sin that last only for a season. That's the, that's the kind of mindset that got us in the mess that we're in. Eve, when she fell into temptation and gave the fruit to Adam and he fell into temptation and, and sin entered into the world. They thought they knew what they needed. They thought they knew what they wanted. But sin entered into the world. And, and you know, I'm thankful that God sees our needs. Because Mary knew what she wanted, but God knew what she needed, more specifically who she needed. The same one that we all need, Christ Jesus our Lord, the one that came and paid the price on that cruel cross of Calvary so that each and every one of us could be saved, shed his life's blood for the remission of our sins. Because God knew what we needed. We needed salvation. We needed to be reconciled back to Him. And there was no way we could do that for, the, for ourselves. No way we could pay a price that, 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 would, that it was cost for us to be saved. We was in a hole so deep that there was no way we could get ourselves out. So God sent us His only begotten Son to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. And, and I'm so thankful for that. And you know, Mary, she questioned of how is it possible that I'm going to going to give birth when I've when I've never known a man when I've never had relations? You know, she was a virgin. So that's when the angel told her, "You're going to conceive of the Holy Ghost." But I like the words that the angel used. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. When they came to Jesus, and how can how can man be saved? Jesus said, with man it's impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. You know, there's no way we could save ourselves. No way we could deliver ourselves. No way we could, could have got, got, got ourselves cleansed of our sins. No matter how good you've lived, how moral you've been, how honest and upright you've been, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death. More specifically, the second death in that terrible, awful place called hell where we will eternally be in torture and torment and suffering and separated from God forever. And there's no way that any of us could ever be worthy enough or deserving enough or good enough to earn our way into heaven. But Jesus came and He made a way for us. He paid the price for us. And I'm so thankful that when I was out there living in sin, doing all the partying, doing all the drinking and all the drugs, and living that terrible, terrible life that I lived before Christ, I'm so thankful that when I knew what I wanted, that God knew what I needed. And He sent me Jesus, the Savior of the world. Praise His holy name forever. He's a wonderful God and He's worthy to be praised. So anyway, the announcement was given to Mary. She was going to have a son. 
You remember from a previous video that the announcement was given to Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, who was married to Elizabeth, that they was going to have a son. Now, Elizabeth and Mary, they were cousins. So one day, Mary, she went to visit Elizabeth. Mary was pregnant with Jesus, just as the angel said that she would be. Elizabeth was, pre was pregnant with John, just as the angel said that she would be. God always keeps his promises. God always works it out. Elizabeth, old in, in age, they thought there was no way she could have a baby get pregnant. God kept his promises and worked it out. On the other end of the, on the other end of it all, Mary, a virgin, never been with a man. Angel said she's going to get pregnant. God gave the promise she's going to have a have a baby, the savior of the world. God worked it out in a miraculous, miraculous way, a miraculous birth, a miraculous conception. God worked it out. God always keeps his promises. Always. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how bad it gets in life. You just always know that the promises of God are true. The promises of God are sure. If He said it in His Word, you can take it to the bank that He will keep that promise. He will give you exactly what He said He will give you. If you just come to Him and serve Him and trust in Him, you will receive eternal life. You will get, get admittance into heaven. You will have your sins forgiven because He said that if you'll confess your sins, He'd be just and faithful to forgive you of your sins. That whoever comes unto him, he did no wise cast out. So God always keeps his promises. But anyway, Mary went to visit with Elizabeth. And uh, when she got there, the scripture says that the babe, John, in Elizabeth's room, that the baby um, leaped leaping for joy. Basically, behold the Savior that takes away the sins of the world, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was rejoicing right there for being in the presence of Jesus. Scripture says that Elizabeth was, was filled with the Holy Spirit immediately and that Mary began to testify of how she was so unworthy and so undeserving to carry the Savior of the world. And, and she was basically thanking God and praising God for the fact that Jesus coming to save them all from their sins that he was making a way for them. And you know, that tells me the moment Jesus got there, everything everything got better. And it always does. I don't know what you're going through today. If you're watching this video, you might be struggling with financial burdens or physical illnesses or, or, or stress or mental issues. Or I don't know what your problems in life are. Problems, they, we've, we've all got them. It's just part of life. We can't get out of this world without having problems. There's going to be tears and we're going to cry. But whatever it is that you're going through, I want you to know, just come to Jesus. Just cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Just, just cast your burdens upon the Lord because He loves you. And here, He'll be there for you. He'll walk beside you. He'll hold your hand. He'll carry you through the hard and the difficult times. Everything gets better when Jesus gets there praise his holy name forever just just remember that and 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 when you're going through those difficulties of life just lean upon the everlasting arms of god the arms of jesus that's that's able to carry you through and take care of you and anyway now we get into the main part of the message itself the birth of john the baptist scripture says that a period of time went by and it came time to Elizabeth was to give birth. So she gave birth to John. And as was custom in those days, a period of time went by, just a number of days, and the people gathered together um, for the time of circumcision. And they was going to, the women just took it for granted that the baby would be named Zacharias, you know, Zach Jr. kind of thing. So uh, that's what they called him. And Elizabeth said, no, his name is going to be John. And the women, they thought, well, John, who's John? You see, back in those days, they gave names to, to the babies that had importance or relevance. For example, after the name of their father or grandfather or great-grandfather. So they said, John, who's John? We don't know a John. There ain't no John in his family. 
So they said, we'll go to Zacharias and see what he's got to say about this. So they went to Zacharias and told Zacharias, you know, I asked Zacharias, rather, what are we going to name the child? He asked for a writing table, the scripture says, like, like a piece of paper or something where he could write on. And um, they give him one, and he wrote down that his name would be John. And immediately, Zacharias was able to speak just like the angel told him that he would be. God always keeps his promises. Remember that. So Zacharias was able to speak just like the angel said that he would. And here's what I want you to notice. The moment Zacharias opened his mouth, the moment that the Lord gave him back his words, gave him back his voice, he began to praise the Lord. And then a little bit more specifically, he told everyone around him that they needed to praise the Lord. And then he gave a list of reasons as to why. And even list of reasons is what I want to really speak on here today. First he said, verses 66 and 68, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So the first reason that we need to praise the Lord, Zacharias was saying, because he has visited us. He came down here to this broken, beat up, destroyed, lost and dying world of sin for us. They laid him in a manger and wrapped him in swaddling clothes for us. The story is told of a of a good and wise king. This king, he loved his people. He wasn't one of them that, that wanted to rule the kingdom with an iron fist, so to speak, but he loved the people. And he wanted to go out among them and live among them for a while so that he could see how they suffered, the kind of things that they experienced, so he could understand the things that they struggled with so that he'd been, better be able to help. So he took off his royal garments. He left his thrown behind and he went out into the village. He lived in houses like the regular people. He he slept in beds like like the like the regular people. He ate the kind of food that the regular people eat. And a period of time went by and he had become friends with an older man and he said to this older man, he said, You don't know this, but I'm actually the king. And I came down here to live among you so that I could see how you struggled, so that I could help you. So, now knowing that, I want to ask you, what can I give you that would make your life easier, that would make your life better? The king was expecting him to give an answer of some extravagant gift, some, some expensive gift that would supply his, his needs of food, clothing, and shelter better. The older man thought for a while, and he looked at him, and he said, you left the throne. You took off the royal garment. You wore the clothes that we wear, lived in the houses that we live in, slept in the beds that we sleep in, ate the food that we eat, struggled with the things that we struggle with. You became our friend. What greater gift could you give us than the gift you already gave? You know, that's exactly what Jesus done, guys. I mean, think about it. Think about heaven and how beautiful and wonderful it is. Think about everything you know about heaven. All the wonderful, wonderful things that Scripture tells us. Jesus left that behind to come down here to this messed up, broken world for us. To befriend us, to become our friend. And the songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. He became our friend. What greater gift could he give us? You know, I praise his holy name forever for the fact that he loved me enough to come here to this broken, messed up world. But Zacharias didn't stop there. Next reason we should praise the Lord is because he has redeemed us. He paid the ransom price. The songwriter said, Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child. And forever I am. 